to destroy the works of the evil one and the kingdom of darkness with light and to rescue men from the law of sin this is the gospel of christ to proclaim good news unto the poor the gospel of christ spreading the soul-saving message of jesus and now ben bailey this is the gospel of christ in Acts chapter 11, verse number 26, the Bible says they were called Christians first in Antioch. Why are there so many Christians in the world today? And more importantly, why should you become a Christian? Stay tuned as we let God's Word answer the question, Why am I a Christian? Welcome to the Gospel of Christ program. My name is Ben Bailey, and we're so glad that you've joined us for our broadcast today. Today's lessons are being brought to you by members of the Church of Christ worldwide. Those members of the Church of Christ in your area would love for you to stop by and visit their worship assembly. If you've got a Bible question or there's something you'd like to study, they'd be happy to sit down and study the Word of God together with you. Also, at the Gospel of Christ, we'd love to help you in your study of the Word of God. You can log on to our website, thegospelofchrist.com, and all our Bible study material is free of charge and available to you. If you'd like to have a copy of today's lesson, whether on DVD or CD, we'd love to send that to you. You can fill out a media request form from our website, or you can call us toll-free at one 855 458-3905. On our website, we have a host of Bible study material, including transcripts, study question, question and answers, and a variety of study materials that would help you in your study of the Word of God. Friend, at the Gospel of Christ, we're concerned about the salvation of souls. That's our main emphasis. We're not concerned about your wallet. We're not concerned about hidden agendas. We just simply want to help men and women know the Word of God and to go to heaven. And so as we transition to our study today, we hope that you'll get your Bible out and have it handy as we're going to look to the Word of God together. Why should someone become a child of God? Why be a Christian? What is it that, that motivates and encourages one to want to be a child of God? And as we think about this today, if you're already a Christian, we want to ask, why are you a child of God? There are some answers that might be given that would be incorrect to this question. For example, example, someone might be a Christian because of family pressure. Jesus said in Matthew 10 verse 37, He who does not love me more than father or mother is not worthy of me. And so maybe a, someone was pressured by family, a, a husband or a wife or, or parents to become a Christian. Friend, I can't obey the gospel and become a Christian because somebody else pressured me to do something I wasn't quite ready to do. Some may have become a Christian because it was the popular thing to do. But Jesus clearly taught that there are many who go down the wrong way, but there are few who choose the right path. Did you do it just because it was a popular thing to do, or did you do it because you wanted to become a child of God? Some may have become a Christian simply because it, it feels right. And while feeling may be involved, we want to combine feeling and truth. John chapter 4, verse number 23 and 24. Apart from a good, fuzzy feeling, did you really know the truth? John chapter 8, verse number 32. Today we want to offer some reasons as to why a person should become a Christian with the impact, hopefully, of encouraging. If you're not a child of God, encouraging you today to become a Christian. And if you are a Christian, encouraging you, motivating you to greater, greater service in the Lord's army. Why am I a Christian? Friend, I'm a Christian because I'm convinced from the Scripture it is the right way. Christianity is the only right way. Being a Christian means that we recognize it is the exclusive way to get to God. Not through Buddha, not through Hindu, not through Judaism, not through all the world religions today. Jesus said the one 
and only way to the Father was through Him. But do you remember John 14, 6? Jesus said, I am the way. Listen to the exclusive nature of that. I am the way, the truth, the life. No man comes to the Father except by me. Friend, there are not 101 ways. There are not 20 ways. There are not two ways. There's one way. Christianity is the only right way to God. The only way. Acts 4 verse 12, Peter proclaimed, Nor is there salvation in any other, for there's no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Friend, a person needs to be a child of God because if you want to go to heaven, it is the one and only way by which you can get there. But when we think about Christianity as the right way, let me illustrate some of the ways in which it is right. Christianity is right in its origin, in its beginning, in its founding. Who originated Christianity? Well, God did. From the beginning, God had planned that salvation would be through His Son. Genesis 3.15, the seed of woman would crush the head of Satan. Jesus comes on the scene being born of a virgin. Matthew 1, 19 through 21. And to Christians, Paul said in Romans 16, 20, that God would crush Satan under their feet shortly. It is of the right origin. Isaiah 62, verses 1 and 2, God said, My people, when my people are called by a new name, the Gentiles will see my righteousness. Acts 11, verse 26. For the very first time, they were called Christians. After Cornelius, a known Gentile, obeyed the gospel. And so it's right in its origin. Christianity is right in its destiny. That is, Christians are destined to go to heaven. Now, does that mean you can't fall away? It's not worth saying. But if someone lives faithful, the end result of the Christian life will be the reward of heaven. 1 John 2 verse 25 says to Christians, this is the promise He's promised us, eternal life. I am the way, the truth, the life. No man gets to the Father except by me. The idea is if we go through Him, we can get to the Father. And so it's right in its destiny, and Christianity is right in its purpose. What are we here for? What's the Christian life all about? Are we here to serve ourselves? Are we here to live it up? Of course not. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes 12, verses 13 and 14, Let's hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God. Keep His commandments. This is the whole duty of man. And so our purpose is to love God and to love others, to live a selfless life and to strive to do good just as Jesus did. And so why be a Christian? Friend, listen carefully. It is the only right way to get to God. There are no other alternatives. There are no other side roads. There's no other paths. Jesus is the way the truth and the life. No man comes to the Father except by Him. Why else should one become a Christian? I'm a Christian because of God's amazing love for me. No one's ever loved you like the God of heaven loves you. Jeremiah 31 verse 3, God says, I have loved you with an everlasting love. From before time, God loved mankind. God is love. 1 John chapter 4, verse number 8. And 1 Peter 5, 7 says, God cares for you. Why am I motivated to be a child of God? Because of God's amazing love for me and for you on an individual level. Well, someone says, okay, I, I understand people talk about that. I hear that. How do I know God loves me? God's love is evidenced in the sacrifice of His Son. How do I know God loves me? God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Jesus went to the cross to bear my sins and yours. He bore our sins in His own body upon the tree. 1 Peter 2.24 I can know God loves me more than I can begin to imagine because He sacrificed His Son. I know God loves me and that's evidence that's demonstrated in the forgiveness of sins. Jesus said, This is my blood of the new covenant shed for many for the remission of sins. When Peter proclaimed, repent and be baptized for the remission of sins, that sacrifice had become available. 
God has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor punished us according to our iniquities. Psalm 103, verse number 10. And friend, I know God loves me and He loves you, and that's evidenced by His providential care of each one of us. Do you remember the words of Psalm 37, verse 25? David said, I've been young and now I'm old, yet I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. Does God take care of His own? You bet He does, and that's proof positive of His love. Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be given unto you. And friend, it is this, this love, the amazing love of God for me, that motivates us to want to live faithful to the Savior. I, I'm compelled, Paul said, I'm motivated by the love of Christ to live every day for Christ. 2 Corinthians 5, verse 14. Paul said in Galatians 2, 20, I've been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave Himself for me. What made Paul live the life of faithfulness that he lived? What made Peter, what made James, what made John face the difficulties that they did and, and still triumph? God his amazing love motivated them every day to serve Him. And friend, that's what motivates us, that God loves me and He loves you so much and He's been so giving and so kind and so caring to each and every one of us. Thirdly, we're motivated to become Christians because of the power of Christianity. When we talk about being a Christian, you're talking about being a part of the most powerful, group of people in all the world. Now what do we mean by power? Are we talking about physical might and strength and ability to overcome in that sense? No. We have spiritual power. I have as a child of God these powers. Number one, I have the power to overcome the world. James said in James chapter 4 verse 4, adulteresses and adulterers and adulteresses, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Whoever therefore desires to be a friend of the world makes himself God's enemy. And so the one who's tied up in the world, he's on the opposite side of God. And yet as a Christian, I can overcome the world. 1 John chapter 5 verse 4, he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. This is the victory we have, even our faith. Jesus said, you can overcome, don't be afraid, you can overcome, because I've overcome. John chapter 16, verse number 33. And so I have the power in this life to overcome this old world, which is one day going to be burned up and destroyed. First John chapter 2, verses 15 through 17. Secondly, as a Christian, I have the power to overcome sin. Now, friend, this is something we've all got to understand. There's none righteous, no, not one. Romans 3, verse 10. All have sinned, fall short of the glory of God. Romans 6, 23. That sin leads to death. The soul who sins shall surely die. Ezekiel chapter 18, verse number 4. But the good news is, through Christ, I have the power to overcome sin. Can you imagine when they heard for that very first time, repent and be baptized for the remission of sins? You mean that sins can be absolutely removed and taken away, not rolled forward, not based on the blood of bulls and goats, which could never take away sin, Hebrews 10, 3 and 4, but through Christ, our Messiah, sins can be wiped away? That was the clarion message that Peter preached. Saul heard it, Saul of Tarsus. Acts 22, 16, Ananias came to Saul and he said, why are you waiting? Arise and be baptized and listen to this, wash away your sins, calling on the name of the Lord. I have the power by obedience to the gospel and contacting the blood of Jesus in baptism, Romans 6, 1 through 4, to access forgiveness and overcome the power of sin. As a child of God, I also have the power to overcome Satan, the greatest enemy, that, that roaring lion, that active, militant, aggressive enemy, Job chapter 1, that one who desires to have us, Luke chapter 22, verse 31, the murderer and liar from the beginning. The Bible says I can overcome him. Listen to Hebrews 2, verse 14. Jesus, he, through death, 
overcame who had the power of death and released those who all their lifetime were subject to bondage. On the cross, what did Jesus do? Jesus overcame Satan and death. And the Bible says in Romans 16, 20, the God of peace will crush Satan under your feet shortly. Can I overcome Satan through Christ? Absolutely. I can defeat the greatest enemy. But you know, there's another idea, and I hope you'll listen real carefully to this. Why am I a Christian? I'm a Christian because of the power of Christianity. And friend, that power means that I can overcome death. Ponce de Leon is known in history and mythology for searching for the, the fountain of youth. He wanted to find this pool, alleged pool, that if a man would bathe in it, he could live forever. There is no fountain of youth in some water pool somewhere in the world. But did you know Christianity promises the power to overcome death? Ponce de Leon had to look no further than the Word of God to learn that. The Bible says in John chapter 11, Verses 24 and 25, Jesus speaking about re the resurrection after raising Lazarus from the dead. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and life. Listen to this. He who dies, he who believes in me and dies, Jesus said, will never really die. Do you want to overcome death? That can only be done through Christ. Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. Yes, says the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors, and their works do follow them. 1 Corinthians 15, verses 51 through 55, clearly teaches that, that death has been defeated. Oh, death, where's your sting? Oh, Hades, where's your strength? The strength of sin is death, the strength of the law. And he goes on to mention all that there. But Christ has overcome them. Death and sin and the Hadean realm has been defeated through Christ. How, how do you overcome death? How do you live forever? Matthew 25, 46, Jesus said, The righteous will go away into everlasting or eternal life. Why am I a Christian? Because of the power of Christianity. Friend, I'm a Christian because of eternity. Let's realize that eternity is real. I may not understand every facet and idea of eternity, but Ecclesiastes 3.11 says that God has put eternity in our hearts. I have the idea to understand to some extent that when this life ends, there's going to be a land of forever where there'll be no end and time will not exist. Hebrews 9 verse 14 teaches us that we have the eternal spirit of God, he, that we know that God's eternal. Uh, Jesus said in John 17, 3, Restore to me that which we had from eternity. And thus, the idea of eternal life is something that we recognize to be true according to the Scriptures. I'm a Christian not only, though, because I believe eternity is real, but because I know about the two options. I want more than anything to go to heaven. Jesus said in John 14, 1, Let not your heart be troubled. Y yes, I'm about to leave, but don't get discouraged. You believe in God, believe also in me. Or you believe in me, believe also in God. In my Father's house are many mansions. Were it not so, I would have told you. And then he said this, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself that where I am, there you may be also. Don't you want to live in that place? No more sorrow, no more sin, no more death, no more crying. All the former things have passed away. Paul looked at it this way. He said in Romans 8, 18, I consider that the sufferings of this present world are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Why become a Christian? Because of eternity and because of the promise of heaven in eternity. My friend, also realize this. I want to be a Christian because of eternity and I realize there is another option on the other side that's not heaven. I realize that hell is a real place. Jesus said in Mark 9, verse 44, that hell is a place where the worm does not die and the fire is not quenched. Can you imagine a place where there's a continual worm, maggot as it were, eating on your flesh? And nobody ever turns down the fire. What a horrible place that would be. Revelation chapter 20, verses 12 through 15, it is described as a place of eternal torment. 
uh, Matthew 25, great weeping and gnashing of teeth. And, and you remember the vivid story of Luke 16, verses 19 through 31, where the rich man went to torment. And in that place, he wanted just one drop of water. Give me just one drop of water to put on my tongue. I'm tormented in these flames. Can you imagine living in a place like that with no end forever? Time doesn't exist. No way out. I'm a Christian because of eternity. I realize the two options, either heaven with God or hell with the devil. And friends, surely in view of that, one would want to become a child of God. Why else should one become a Christian? I'm a Christian because I also fell in love with the teaching of the Bible. I fell in love with the author of the Bible itself. God is a God of love. God wants all men to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth. I fell in love with the beautiful style that it is written in, the message of love that God sends about His Son to the world. And no doubt you fell in love with the Bible in that it is from God in the ending pictures Christians as being victorious. Thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible, it's God's power to save. Romans 1.16, if I receive with meekness the implanted word, it's able to save my soul. James chapter 1, verse 21. The, the Bible is so wonderful because it contains everything we need for life and godliness. I don't need anything else to get to heaven except the Bible. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse number 3. And the Bible is something you can fall in love with because you can know it's from God. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction and in righteousness, that the man of God, listen to this, may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. It is all truth. John 16, verse 13, and it has the power to set you free. Jesus said in John 8, 32, you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. Friend, I'm also a Christian because of the immense joy being a Christian brings to my life. I don't have to worry about tomorrow. Jesus said, worry about tomorrow, tomorrow will take care of itself. Don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will take care of itself. Matthew 6, verse 34. Sufficient is the day, for the day is the trouble therein. Proverbs 27, verse number 1. But as a Christian, I can put my trust and joy in Christ. This is why Paul would say, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Philippians 4, verse 4. This is why Paul and Silas, in a deep, dark dungeon, were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Acts chapter 16, verse 25. This is why in the Beatitudes, Jesus will over and over again say, Blessed. Blessed is he who is happy. Blessed is he who would mourn. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness. That's divine happiness given upon God's children. I see the great joy of being a Christian in the peace that I have. As a child of God, the Bible teaches we have peace that surpasses all understanding. Think about that. I can't even begin to understand the peace that Christians could have in the times of great crisis, in times of great loss, in time of great struggle. We can have peace that isn't even understandable because of who Christ is and what He's done for us. But friend, let me mention one of the major reasons that I'm a Christian and that most people in this world are Christians. I'm a Christian simply because of Christ, because of the life that He lived. Think about Mark chapter 7, verse number 37. He has done all things well. What do you mean done all things well? He went about doing good, healing the sick, feeding the poor, helping those who are in need, making the ultimate sacrifice for sin. He lived the perfect life. He was tempted in all points as we are, yet without sin. I'm a Christian because of that, that life, that exemplary life that Jesus lived. I'm a Christian because of Christ's teaching. Love your neighbor as yourself. Do good unto all men. Uh, the Bible clearly teaches that we ought to be the kind of people who exhibit the love of Christ. You want to solve a host of the world's problems, whatever it may be. Friend, I'll assure you, Christ 
has the answer to that. We're to love our enemies. That solves a whole bunch of problems right there. We're to love one another. That solves a whole nother host of problems. We're to feed the hungry and take care of the poor. Look at the good that would do in our world today. Look at the teaching of Christ. No man has ever spoke like this man. That's what the critics of Jesus said. I'm a Christian because of Christ's death on the cross. He was willing to be beaten. Now you think about this. Jesus was willing, because He loved me and you, to be mocked, to be beaten, to have stripes laid on His back over and over again, uh, to be, to be uh, one who was hit in the face, to have that crown of thorns placed on His head. And ultimately, Jesus was willing for His hands and feet to be nailed to a cruel Roman cross, that cross to be suspended between heaven and earth, and there to hang, struggling for every breath until he said these words, It is finished. Why did he do that? Me and you. Because he loves us that much. Friend, I'm a Christian because of the promises that Christ makes to me as his child, that he'll never leave me nor forsake me. Hebrews 13, that if I remain faithful unto death, I can receive the crown of life, uh, 1 John 2, verse 25, that He is going to prepare a place for me and that He will come again and receive me to, my, to Himself, John 14, verses 1 through 6, and that on that great day, those who have fallen asleep in Christ and those who are alive can be caught up in the air with Christ to ever live with Him. And so we come full circle and we ask you the very important question again. Are you a Christian? If you're not a Christian, friend, we're urging you, we're begging you today, in view of these principles, won't you become a child of God? Maybe you've heard the message about Jesus, Romans 10 verse 10, Romans 10 verse 17. Maybe you believe that Jesus is God's Son, John chapter 8 verse number 24. And that belief, maybe it'll motivate you to, to turn from sin and change your life, Acts 3 verse number 19. Would you confess Christ as the Lord and Savior of your life? Matthew 10, verse 32 and 33. And would you do what Jesus said to get into the kingdom? Unless a man is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. John chapter 3, verse number 5. If as a Christian, maybe your zeal and, and your faithfulness to the Lord is not what it needs to be. Friend, we hope today that whatever the case your status is, that you'll be encouraged based on the love of Christ to live faithful to God every day and ultimately go to heaven. You may have just joined our program and are wondering, what is the Gospel of Christ? The Gospel of Christ is an evangelistic work of the Churches of Christ that reaches the whole world with the Gospel through TV, radio, and Internet. Our motto is to take the whole Gospel to the whole world. We believe in having a book, chapter, and verse for everything we say and do. And unlike many religious groups today, we're concerned about lost souls, not your wife. This is the Gospel of Christ. We encourage you to visit thegospelofchrist.com for a host of Bible study materials as well as audio and video copies of our lessons. If you would like to have a copy of today's lesson, please visit our website and fill out a media request form or you can email us at mail at thegospelofchrist.com. Call us toll-free at 1-855-458-3905 or write to us at P.O. Box 788, McMinnville, Tennessee, 37111.